The plant that produces this best-selling car is just one part of an industry that employs nearly 82,000 people in one state. Four major assembly plants, plus almost 460 automotive-related manufacturing, service, and technology centers comprise a network of businesses that make up a significant portion of its state's economy. And where is this state? You might be surprised to learn that Kentucky produced well over 1 million vehicles in 2013, and that the state's automotive production actually jumped 22% from 2012. This industry alone has brought in over 17,000 jobs since 2010, along with over $4 billion in capital investment. When the ES350 Lexus comes on board in Georgetown next year, we will move past Ohio into second place. Only Michigan will be producing more uh, trucks and cars than the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And from this old country boy standpoint, uh, I like to say uh, at every junction, who'd have thunk it? So why did the automotive industry come to Kentucky? Good question. And the answer starts with energy. Kentucky's electricity prices have been among the nation's lowest for years, a factor that along with location, water, and other incentives, has helped attract valuable industry to the Commonwealth. Kentucky is a manufacturing state. While we have a fairly broad base of other things like agriculture, tourism, uh, logistics around the UPS hub in Louisville, we're still very heavily oriented toward manufacturing. The bottom line is, cheaper electricity attracts jobs and a big factor in the cost-effectiveness of Kentucky's energy prices has been the historic abundance of cheap coal. Those businesses are here not because they like the climate, but because of uh, the presence of a significant edge in terms of energy costs because of our historic reliance on coal. So it's a cost of input, so if the cost of electricity is lower, it allows manufacturers to uh, make their products more competitively internationally and be able to provide products to the consumers at a lower price. For decades, the average price of electricity in Kentucky has been among the lowest in the nation. However, significant changes are happening, and any changes that increase electricity prices certainly have the potential to impact all parts of our economy, including employment. Changes in the energy landscape for Kentucky today are reflected in the shifting coal industry. Coal is a changing industry, I think, not just in Kentucky and this country, but also in the world. Uh, we're seeing changes in demand, we're seeing changes in the amount produced and where it's produced. Kentucky coal production has been steadily decreasing over recent decades, and even more rapidly in recent years. You're competing with uh, coal that's coming out of the Four Corners and, and uh, uh, is coming from the western United States where the seams are much more easily accessible and, um, and transportation is not as, as much an issue. While western Kentucky coal has been fairly stable in recent years, the drop in eastern Kentucky coal production has been nothing short of dramatic. Well, in our western Kentucky coal field, we've seen an uptick. We've seen an increase in employment and an increase in production. I think that trend will continue because it's part of what's called the Illinois Coal Basin. In the east, we've seen a precipitous drop. Essentially, since January 1, 2012, we've lost more than 7,000 direct mining jobs. There is a tendency to think that Kentucky's coal employment has generally been a steady chart of growth. In fact, it's been a roller coaster. Mechanization of mining has played a significant role, but other forces are contributing as well. The economics of coal, I think, are the primary cause of the um, situation the industry is in. It isn't as competitive as it used to be. Coal production, and subsequently coal jobs, decrease as coal use declines. Coal-fired power plants are being retired, and a debate exists as to what the primary reason is. I think you have a number of factors. Uh, the lion's share, the, the main portion, I think, of the blame should go to the president and his administration. I think they're definitely targeting coal in many ways in its usage, and a lot of that's connected to the president's actions regarding climate change. To take actions unilaterally, I think, dis puts a tremendous disadvantage with a fuel source that we have in the ground here that the rest of the world wants. However, others don't agree that the main problem is regulations. The unit cost of production of Appalachian coal has risen sharply as the reserves 
that are easily obtainable have been depleted. And even absent any regulatory driver, if you look at the Energy Information Administration's uh, numbers, they had been predicting a precipitous decline in coal production from the Appalachian region. And that has come to pass. Regardless of the cause, the cost of using coal is becoming more expensive. And utilities both in Kentucky and in our surrounding states are evaluating other options. New technology in energy has completely changed the landscape of energy in the United States. The rise of fracking in the United States has really dramatically uh, increased the availability of the pool of natural gas, which drives prices down. Coal from East Kentucky is just more expensive. And why would a utility use that coal when they can get cheaper coal and now much cheaper natural gas? Declining coal use has multiple causes, but one distinct, unforeseen cause has been the technological advancements that have made natural gas a more cost-effective and cleaner energy source than coal. Utility companies are taking note. I think about all the different cost issues that are out there. The answer is that we are kind of singularly able to go down a natural gas-fired path as the future for the time being, for the next several decades, with what's setting up today as policies and, and cost issues today. It is not a coal direction. I think coal will become less and less used. Currently, over 92% of the electricity in Kentucky is generated by coal-fired power plants. But current projections show there will likely be a swift move toward natural gas-fired plants by 2050. Remember that the electric utility business is a long-term business. If we build a natural gas combined cycle, it's probably going to have a 25, 20 to 25 year financial life. So the decisions we make today are going to have an impact long term. Despite being a cleaner fuel, natural gas has several detractions, including volatile prices, delivery issues, and the inability to store it. One thing I think we have to keep in mind is that what appears to be stable today can change very dramatically over a five, three to five year period. Look at what has happened with fracking and natural gas. I don't know of anybody who was predicting that a decade ago, and it's been dramatic. But natural gas prices are relatively volatile. For natural gas, it has historically been much more volatile in its price. Coal has been fairly consistent in its price. As the energy landscape changes nationally and globally, Kentucky needs proactive decisions. These decisions will have far-reaching impacts on our economy well beyond the coal industry. I think it would put a chill on our ability to recruit manufacturing jobs to this state and attract jobs that use a lot of electricity. When they're looking to do expansion, they look at all the factors across the board that we've already talked about. And one of them right now is energy cost. If energy prices went up uh, dramatically, so would the, the cost of production and the cost of the final good. 20 years ago, I would have said, yes, we're competing with Indiana, Ohio, and Tennessee. Today, we're competing with India. Uh, we're competing with countries all over this world. Today, we are challenged to handle economic fluctuations and understand federal government mandates while balancing the unique needs of Kentucky. It is within a fairly brief span of years that our great asset, which was low-cost coal-fired power, has now become our, a potential great liability. It's critical we do everything we can to keep manufacturing jobs in Kentucky. And I think diversifying our portfolio so we aren't dependent on one primary fuel source where what happens to that fuel source is the primary driver of our electricity rates requires us to diversify our portfolio. I'm a firm believer that we really need all available sources of energy in our country. And I think a diverse portfolio is extremely important. You don't want to become too reliant on any particular fuel. You want the most robust portfolio that you can uh, reasonably develop. I, I think to just say, well, we need to have a more diverse portfolio is, one, is, is questionable. I think we need to do what's best for Kentucky, what's going to keep our, 
electricity rates low, what's going to make electricity reliable, and what resources do we have in Kentucky that we can use. It's critical that our state really think about how do we lead into a clean energy economy in a way that produces jobs and economic opportunity that matter to people in the coal fields. And to say our only strategy is to protect the coal industry is to put our heads in the sand. In addition to focusing on energy production, another critical issue is conserving electricity before it is used. Manufacturers as a whole are looking to do energy audits. Having teams coming in, some are in-house teams that continually evaluate how the operations are running and looking how they can conserve the use of kilowatts and energy in, in their operations. We do uh, thousands of energy audits. Our, our owners do lots of audits. We help our owners do lots of audits. Energy efficiency will never replace coal, but it could contribute 10 or 20 percent of our electricity needs over the next um, 20 years. That's a huge contribution. Dramatic shifts in energy use and production are happening. Undoubtedly, all viable sources of energy and conservation strategies should be explored to maintain a healthy environment and a growing economy. We're in an energy transformation as a country and a globe, and uh, Kentucky should be a leader in what it looks like to not just produce coal-fired electricity, but how to also produce clean power in a way that creates jobs and opportunities for our people. Every energy source has a footprint, every energy source. It is, I think, incumbent on all of us to try to responsibly manage our own utilization of energy and to demand that, uh, that the, those costs associated with it are borne by those who benefit rather than being shifted onto the backs of a relative few people. We do believe that coal is going to be produced for hundreds of years in the future. For our grandchildren's grandchildren's lives, there's going to be coal production in Kentucky. But who uses that coal, I think, is the really big question. Clearly, this is going to continue to unfold. Uh, but we need to be, A, we need to be informed and on top of the situation. I think we have a responsibility to use energy as wisely as possible. But we equally have an obligation as a cooperative to do whatever we can to help our end consumer who owns us uh, to, to save money or at least to minimize the impact of them. The simple thing that I think people should recognize is that when it comes to laws and policies that their representatives and senators are talking about, there are trade-offs and there are economic trade-offs with energy and with the environment. We have to have a multi-generational view of how we're using energy and what the impact is on our environment because, again, we, we want to leave it a good place for all of our uh, descendants to enjoy, so we have to be smart about how we use the energy. We've got to bring some clarity and, and resolve to the issue, otherwise not only will Kentucky lose, but the nation will lose as a whole from my perspective. There are significant shifts happening right now in the fuel used at electric power plants nationwide and even here in Kentucky. The challenge for the Commonwealth is that we must make important, proactive decisions at both governmental and industry levels to address this complex issue of energy. The strength of our economy is, and will be, based largely on affordable and reliable energy. Nowhere is this more relevant than within our important manufacturing sector. But an energy course must be charted that protects both job growth and the environment. That won't happen without proactive leadership. Because no matter how you interpret the history, the law, and data, our energy future requires bold yet common sense thinking to promote the prosperity and well-being of all Kentuckians.